This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with vocalist James Rivera of James Rivera's Metal Wave. If I knew absolutely nothing about James Rivera's Metal Wave, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, the album title says it all. It's New Wave Gone Metal. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is actually, you know, a project that you've had for quite some time. You have the album coming out on July 28th, New Wave Gone Metal, but you've been performing live as James Rivera's Metal Wave for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, the album was actually turned in two years ago, um, everything. But because of the, you know, com coming out of the pandemic, things were so far behind that, I mean, there's releases that are just, you know, bands are dying left and right and crying and but it's just the way it is you know i mean um so uh you know, it's like you know get in line and um but yeah it, it, it was done two years ago matter of fact it was turned in september of 2021 everything mixed mastered all that <laughs> <laughs> well it must have been nerve-wracking waiting all this time to get this music out it was and, and at the same time you know, instead of like griping and, and just, you know, hearing out the, the people at the label and the reasons, that, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of like, it's just like, you know, look, as long as you're not making me look like the boy that cried wolf, you know, don't tell me, uh, oh, we think it's going to come out, you know, I know, I know, James, but I think really, uh, and then think the, the only exaggeration was they were predicting March of 2023. But a few months, it, it didn't matter to me anymore, you know, so I was like, July, August, whatever, it's fine to me, you know, because, I mean, I understand, I get it, you know, you you know, what can you do if that's what's going on? And finally, the album comes out tomorrow. We're talking on the 27th through Massacre Records, New Wave Gone Metal. Uh, you got a couple of songs out now. One of the songs out is Black Celebration by Depeche Mode. Kind of a rare cut for them. Uh, why'd you choose that particular song by them? Well, it, because it was almost like the perfect song to to really create it the way we wanted to in a metal form, you know. Um, and it wasn't like one of their biggest hits, you're right. But it was, um, in Europe, though, they consider it the classic, all-time classic song. So you see in different regions and um, but in, in particular, that, that song was the song, that album, that tour was what, you know, what made me when, when you're in that crowd of metalheads, everybody's wearing the denim jacket with the venom patch and the Iron Maiden and the Saxon, you got the skinny uh, jeans with the high top white tennis shoes and the, the, the nerds that are wearing Duran Duran shirts are like, we're going to kill you, man. You know, yeah, it, it was the, it was the band, the tour. The opening of when they opened with that song that had both me and Larry kind of like step outside of the circle a little bit. Where are you guys going? Oh, nowhere. <laughs> We're going to go sneak in the car and listen to the Pesh Mo real quick. <laughs> you know, yeah, because <laughs> we got hooked. But it was so um, gloomy, theatrical, and nothing that we expected. And it was... Uh, a fluke how we went to that concert that was at this place called Ash the World in Houston, uh, Six Flags, that uh, amusement park. And during the summer in the 80s, they had what's called the free concert series. So if you bought a ticket to Ash the World, you went to the concert. It was an outside stadium concert. Nine out of ten of those bands were, you know, the Go Go's and Duran Duran and da 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 da. -da. And, and the day that, that Larry bought the tickets to go to Ash the World, the Fish Mode was playing. So he calls me early one Saturday morning and he says, you know, hey, dude, I got tickets to Ask the World. I'm like, oh, cool. He goes, man, I tell you what, go get the acid and I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll just give you your ticket. And, you know, we'll go check out the, that band that's playing. I go, well, what band's playing? He goes, I don't know, man. Those guys, uh, to push something, uh, people love people. Why she did? Oh, those guys. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go fuck with all the nerds. <laughs> so. That was our intention, was to go, and we got on the rides, we messed with all the little new waivers, and then it was time to go to the show. By now, yeah, I'm seeing rainbows and unicorns and all kinds of stuff, and he's flipping out, and he's walking around like, dude, and I'm like, what? He goes, man, 
I don't know. These people look more dead than we do. <laughs> so what it, <laughs> what it was, we were introduced to the goth scene. And they were all pale, dressed in black from head to toe. And it wasn't anything like we thought. And when they opened up with Black Celebration, dude, with that, that uh, kabuki drop and just these black silhouettes and all the fog and, and that eerie beginning, we were sold. It, it, to us, it was metal. <laughs> it was metal. It was a new wave, you know. Absolutely. Um, the, on the flip side of things, single-wise, you, you took on a mega hit by uh, Tears for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Now, that's sort of the opposite end, I think, of Depeche Mode and New Wave. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what happened is by the time, um, you know, I got hooked on Depeche Mode, I started discovering the psychedelic furs. And so here I was, kind of like a double agent. You know, and, and a lot of my metalhead peers had no idea that I was listening to this stuff when I went home more than I was the metal at times. And uh, and it, but that was also you have to keep in mind that it was also at a time when our career was really getting ready to launch an L star, our second album, Remnants of War. And we were you know, getting we were getting ready to go on tour with Megadeth. And so my whole world of metal was, I mean. To me, I was like, how much more can I, can I can I consume of this, you know? And so the the new wave, dark wave stuff was a little bit of a breath of fresh air. And I think it was because it was melodic and being a singer, um, these certain songs, they they hit me like a rock the first second I ever heard it. And so when I first heard that single, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, I, I went and bought that 45. And, you know, when you had a record player back then, you used to leave the arm off and it would just play over and over and over again. Well, that 45 played for about two months over and over again. Every morning I got dressed to go to work for the law firm that I was still loosely working for because I had quite said goodbye. I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> Do you have another song that you have planned to release from the album? Yeah, what we did in the beginning, we did one already, um, but for some weird reason, it was done so early. And they didn't have a release date, so I think it got lost. But their attitude was, let's get something out because I feel bad for you. And, you know, I know that you're sitting there going, well, when's my album coming out? You know, let's just put out. So we did put out Love My Way by the Psychedelic First. So that was our first thing, actually. But it didn't get a lot of attention because that it's hard when you don't have a release date and you don't have all the stuff to follow through with it. You know, like these two, they had a release date. So the plan was in motion. This was just, let's just put something out there to keep you happy so that, you know, we, yeah, so we, you know, that it's going to happen. <laughs> and that was like seven months ago or something, you know? So it, you guys didn't stay true to the original. You kind of put your own stamp on a lot of things. And obviously that was important to kind of differentiate yourself from uh, the original versions. Yeah, and you know, and, there, and it's a double-edged sword because some of the some like you know, a small handful of European reviews were like, you know, oh, they're, they're not even close to the original. And then you have this. I did an interview the other day, and uh, this guy uh, was just like, you know, if you're gonna do some cover, you know, you don't want it to be what's there because then you can just just listen to the original. And what you guys did was brilliant, you know. So you see, it just. It depends on the person. But um, one thing we did do, though, we did at least focus on keeping the uh, vocal melodies pretty much the same. The music, what happened underneath is we had to make it metal because that's what our goal was. Is to, let's take these songs and make them metal, but let's not destroy the melody. So it was a, it was a little bit of a task to do that. And so I want especially the choruses, I wanted to make sure that they they still had the same hook as the original almost, you know. Were there songs that you play in your live set that you couldn't get on the album for timing or it just didn't fit or you something yeah. like that? Yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, it was already the album was already done and and it was too late, but we were already working on How Soon Is Now by the Smiths. And that one didn't make it. And if it did, it would have been the single for sure because it's one of our most powerful songs. I mean, um, and, and, every, and everybody says it's the highlight of our show. Morrissey would be proud. <laughs> we just won't tell him that we eat meat, you know, yeah. <laughs> that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. 
So how did you end up signing with Massacre Records to finally get this album out? Well, what it was is we were already signed to Massacre, uh, you know, uh, with Hellstar. And so um, we had released um, a single when we first signed with Massacre with Hellstar. I was signed to them a few times in, in my career. Uh, and, you know, but it's you always find yourself going back home to the Germans, you know, no matter, no matter how you slice it and dice it. And then we did an EP. Then, the, you know, the, the pandemic was going on. And then that's when uh, me and the guitar player from All Star started recomposing these songs and we started recording them and they got wind of it. And uh, he, he asked me, what is this metal weight thing that you're doing? And I explained it to him. He said, really? And I said, why? I said, we, we're just doing it just because we're bored. We didn't think it was going to. Then he said, well, let me tell you a little story. So he tells me a story about a band called Atrocity, an old German thrash band. And I think they just reunited. They did something like this in the late 90s, and they called it 80s Works. And it was a lot of some of the same artists that were doing. However, their metal versions of it, because of the time period, was more along the lines of Nine Inch Nails and what was about to become a Ramstein. So it wasn't like true classic metal doing new way, how we kind of did it, you know, and do me and a little bit more Sabbathy and that kind of thing. And with vocals with a lot of range and um so they he just thought it would be a great idea he told me that those guys sold a crap load of albums with that project more than their own band and so i guess he kind of thought you know hey let's throw a dart see if it sticks you know what, what's it gonna hurt you know and then that's kind of how it happened you have a album release party coming up on august 5th at the compound and Houston, Texas, with a couple of other bands. Are you going to be playing the entire album? The entire album, yes. <laughs> and the Morrissey song. <laughs> and we got a, a London After Midnight song that's almost done, and then a uh, David Bowie song that we're working on that's almost done. And Red Skies at Night by The Fix is also yeah, in the works, too. I noticed that a lot of the new wave bands that you covered were from the United Kingdom or European areas or stuff like that. Not too many American bands. I mean, granted, a lot of music came out of the UK in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Well, what it is is that it, it's that, that a lot of them were, um, they were, um, they, the reason why they sound a little different and maybe a sound a little darker and sadder is that they were bands that were already kind of writing in harmonic minor chords. You see, and so w when we started thinking of all these songs that we wanted to do, you know, if you, when we finally got the, the full band, because it started out with just me and Larry, the guitar player and, um, and the bass player. And then we decided to go ahead and start hiring musicians or finding musicians when it, we realized it was going to be a project, now, you know, and not just something to record for fun. Um you know, he, he was very picky about stuff. And then people were throwing out ideas. Oh, we got to do this. What about this one? No, it won't work. It's too happy. It's a major. And they go, well, we could rewrite it in minor. He goes, yeah, but then we change the whole structure. And then James ain't going to be happy because it's probably going to change the chorus. And he wants everything to stay pretty much close to the same. And it was like, oh, I get it. You know, like, so like we, we went through, I mean, just several that we, we tried. And it just, you know, the, the idea just wasn't there, you know. I mean, and even like Duran Duran, we, we found one and uh, that's it. And, you know, save a prayer. And it, we are going to do that, you know. So, um, but, uh, and you know, what's funny is that he even said, because somebody brought up, you know, man, we're going to do Flock of Seagulls. And then uh, he goes, you know, dude, I ran with work. <laughs> I said, really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. So, <laughs> no, you got to do Never Ending Story. Oh, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Still gets millions of streams on Spotify. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. So are you going to be uh, just touring locally with this project? Or are you going to eventually make your way up to the East Coast? I noticed you stayed down near your hometown. Yeah, no, we, we plan to take this out. We just got to let, you know, we got to let it, let it uh, evolve out of its embryo stage to you know where people really start to know what it is and you know and i think that 
And it's one of those projects where you either love it or hate it. There's no in between. Um, and we're finding that, or I'm finding that, um, it's just the people that are, and it's not really hate it. They're just like, oh, you know, I don't know about that. But but the, the one thing that we're noticing is that we're bringing together two worlds because the new waivers from the 80s that didn't like metal or didn't think they would, we're gaining some of those at our shows because it, it's got their interest. Like, so what is this? These guys are doing my favorite band's metal. But now they're in their 40s and 50s, and they're like, hey, I'd rather listen to anything from the 80s anyway, in any style, you know, than what's out there now sometimes. So it goes, you know, hey, baby, let's go check out this wave of metal. No, it's metal wave, Don, or whatever. Let's go check it out, you know. It's got that guy, James Rivers, you know. No, it's James Rivera. Well, whatever, you know. And then they see the show, and they come up, they buy a shirt, and they're like, holy crap, man. I never really was into metal, but God damn listening to these songs the way y'all did them brought back memories it's different but it's still the song and i got to sing along to it and dude we love you guys <laughs> you see so and the metal hits that were like yeah they didn't hate new wave but but then they come and then they hear our versions of it they're like dude i don't even want to listen to the original anymore <laughs> this is the way it should have been played and i'm like no no that's not true i mean if they hadn't played it the way they did we wouldn't be doing it now you just you just were one of those stubborn ones that we that had to hide from when we were listening to our, what do you got in your Walkman, man? Oh, nothing. You know, yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. <laughs> Better be some merciful fate in there. Oh, yeah, there is. There is. <laughs> so in between your shows, uh, you're also still making festival stops with Hellstar, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're, we're uh, in the middle of writing the new Hellstar record, and we've got quite a few shows coming up uh, we got some more metal wave shows coming up around regionally and um uh, but yeah the all-star record is kind of a priority right now but the shows we had in stone we they're there so i'm trying to avoid picking up too many more shows to distract from the writing process if it's local and and it's you know something that it, it's not going to take but a day of our time sure you know uh but like they looking to go out on a few dates or a run or something is like out of the question right now. So we're, we're saving all that for 2024. Speaking of 2024, you're coming up on the 35th anniversary of one of your landmark albums with Hellstar, Nos, Nos, Surf, I can't even say it. Nos Nos Nosferatu. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier to say with the accent. I don't know why it just is. <laughs> You know, yeah, if you just get you just something about the accent. You have to do Nosferatu, and it's easier than Nosfer, Nosferat, you know, Nosferat, you know, yeah, yeah, Nosferatu, you know, yeah, yeah it's easy. But, um, yeah, 35 year anniversary, and um, we're doing a, a special show at this big festival now that takes place in Houston called Hell's Heroes. And um, we're doing a special Nosferatu set. We're not necessarily doing the album from beginning to end, but we're doing the whole side one that was the Dracula story. And then we did a follow-up album <laughs> Jesus, 35 years later called Vampiro that came out in 2016. That whole album is Vampire Dracula already. So we went for the gusto on that one. And that's what launched my James Vampiro career as the vampire forever now, you know, and people love it. And it's, it's going to have a big stage show with the coffin and, and uh, cemetery tombs and everything. Now, I know as the older albums get, sometimes the rights pass from different people and different labels. Do you know if anybody's going to do anything with the music to honor the uh, 35th anniversary of this album? I don't know. I'm sure. But, well, Metal Blade owns it forever. Um, uh -huh. That's one thing for sure. I'm sure that, uh, you know, I, I should send a message to Brian and say, hey, you know, it is going to be 35 year anniversary. You know, I, I am now a living vampire. What can we do to make, you know, let's do a remaster or something. You know, let's let's do something. I mean, it's been done. It's been done several ways, but maybe we can do something a little bit more different, you know, just to go ahead and, and bring it back to life again. I mean, it's the undead never die. So <laughs> they go to sleep for a while. But yeah. So, do you also have a third project called James Rivera's Metal Extravaganza? Yeah, all that is, is it used to be, well, it, it still is. 
what it is is I have I have several projects. So <laughs> um, James Rivera's Metal Wave and Hellstar are probably the priority ones because they're the ones that are signed at least. Okay. Then what I had started, what led me to do this Metal Wave too, on top of being a tribute band. It, it, see, it was supposed to be like a tribute band, but because of the way that we recomposed it, people look at it like, dude, this isn't a tribute band anymore. This is kind of original. You did it your own way. So forget the word tribute. But my worldwide known tribute band was called Sabbath Judas Sabbath. And I did that for 20 years. And I, I developed like nine chapters across the world, you know, so four in the, in the U.S. and five, I mean, four in Europe, five in the U.S. And it, what I did was I just picked different bands and I would fly into those territories and do the same show, but with different bands. So it was kind of like being a Dean Mark, you know, and it was cost efficient. Um, and so I ended up getting well known for this thing. But then about 15 years later, like say five years ago, tribute bands started to become a, an abundance, especially here in Houston. So when you've got three other Judas Priest tributes and you've got four other Dio tributes, and, you know, it, it just it just didn't feel comfortable anymore. And so what we did, and then I noticed that too, when we were at shows, um, you know, strictly, you know, this is a tribute to Black Sabbath and Judas Priest. You know, it wasn't as bad as the guy going, play some Skinner, but you know, it's like, dude, our man, you know, or something, you know. And, you know, so eventually we started adding in UFO, Scorpions, you know, you know, our maiden, uh, uh, Death Leopard, Metal Church, Grim Reaper. So the next thing you know, it starts becoming, it became this thing called Metal Extravagance. It, it, it was it's first called James Rivera's Sabbath Judas Sabbath Metal Extravaganza, the ultimate tribute to Black Sabbath and Judas Priest and other metal gods. But the title just got too long. So what we just said now is it's called James Rivera's Metal Extravaganza. And people know that it's really just a um, it's a satellite of Sabbath Judas Sabbath. Uh, in Europe, though, it's still just Sabbath Judas Sabbath. They haven't really caught on to the metal extravaganza yet because they got to learn all these songs. So the mothership of uh, what was Sabbath Judas Sabbath metal extravaganza is the entire Hellstar line. So we get two gigs out of it at festivals. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, so we, we did it in Spain. We did it in Slovenia. So the promoters are like, well, one day we'll have you play as Sabbath Judas Sabbath, and then the next day you can play as Hellstar. Like, my wallet's going, I like that. You know, <laughs> sure, why not? You know? <laughs> We're here. I mean, it, there's no extra work, you know. So it was a clever idea when it was happening, but we still do it, but once in a blue moon. Um, and we, you know, I'm trying to get every chapter to turn into metal extravaganza in time, but it's not that important right now. And then there's this other thing called James Rivers Metal Asylum. And all that is, is a tribute to myself because I sang for Vicious Rumors, Destiny Zen, Seven Witches, Killing Machine, Malice, Hellstar. So that band plays everything in every band that I've ever played in. And people love that show. And I've taken that to Europe and people are going, oh, now this we like because it's like seeing seven bands in one. And, uh, so that's the other thing that I do, but it's, it's also kind of rare. It's not that common. Well, you need to talk massacre and putting out an album with that one, with all the different bands that you're saying, that would be I, perfect. Oh yeah. That, well, Thomas and I already discussed that. <laughs> and um, so it, it would be kind of like, you know, we, we was like, well, should we do a compilation of the original songs to make it easier? They're already recorded. Or do we have, this band you have now called Metal Asylum, which they're based in San Antonio, re-record all the songs. And I go, mm, that's a tough one there because you don't want to piss off some of these older fans. Go, what? You know, they, yeah, maybe just releasing the original versions of those songs, but remastered, or, um, or maybe I can actually um, just redo the vocals, you know, and uh, and and just something that'll make it a little different, but. Um, that's that's a double-edged sword um of course the band is saying dude if you want to re-record all the songs i go yeah but what if you don't nail it to the cross you know then it, it gets butchered 
You know, they should have just left it alone. This new band is horrible. You never know. You're going to have one of those hardcore Germans that ain't going to like it. You know, yeah. <laughs> Of Europeans, they they're very honest, and they and they and they don't even they have no care. They don't even know if they're hurting your feelings or not, and they love you to death, though. Oh, Brian James, I love you. Yet. Oh man, the last house star was great. The metal asylum, man, that's so good. But man, you know, you, yeah, you're like, dude, you know, hey, when you sign my stuff, and you're like, you just put down my album, dude. You know, yeah. <laughs> Well, those are all the questions I have for you today, James. James Rivera's Metal Wave, New Wave Gone Metal. It comes out July 28th through Massacre Records. Great album. I enjoyed it, and I wish you the best Thank of luck you. with it. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate that.